Am I wrong for refusing to go to my friend's boyfriend's party after she demanded to approve my outfit? My 29 female friend Kate, 28 female, has a boyfriend Jamie, 29, whom she has been with for nearly 3 years. We met Jamie on a night out and I would say that although he's Kate's boyfriend, I consider him a friend. We share an interest in a particular sport that we text about sometimes and if I have a spare hospitality ticket to one of the sporting pictures, I will sometimes invite Jamie to go. Jamie's 30th is coming up and Jamie and Kate planned a big party and I peripherally helped out with logistics when asked. A few days ago, Kate texted me. She asked if I wouldn't mind toning down my look for the party and if I could send her a picture of what I was planning to wear. I asked her what this meant and after asking several times if she really had to say it, she asked if I could dress verbatim, basically what I would consider frumpy because she really didn't want to be outshone at her own boyfriend's birthday party. When I didn't reply right away, she went on to say that she wanted Jamie's full attention that night which she couldn't get if I showed up dressed properly. I was a bit annoyed by what she was implying so I said if I was going to be so much of a concern for her, I'd rather just politely decline the invitation. Katie freaked out saying I was being immature by not coming just because I couldn't steal the spotlight. I said it wasn't about that, it was about her making me responsible for whether or not I drew her boyfriend's attention, which is something I've never tried to do nor done as far as I'm aware. She then said it was really important to Jamie that she stand out because his friends and colleagues would be there. I just told her that again, if she was so worried I was going to be distracting everyone, I'd rather not come than feel humiliated from now until the event. I said I would send her Jamie's gift and she could tell him why I wasn't coming. I guess she didn't tell him the reason because Jamie messaged me saying he knows I'm booked the night of the party but he'd really like it if I could be there and asked if I could reorganize so I could come. I hadn't replied but I got a message from Kate saying she knows Jamie is trying to get me to come and please could I just put my pride aside and come to the party. I asked if she was going to ditch the outfit policing but she said no so I said I would not be coming. She didn't reply but I've since received a couple of texts from mutual friends saying that while her request is ridiculous, Kate is aware of that. She's just desperate to be seen a certain way and even if it's pathetic, I would probably feel the same way in her shoes. Other friends I've told who do not know Kate say I should not bow to the pressure and that she's nuts for even asking and I don't disagree but I also feel bad for skipping the party when it's Jamie's birthday and he asked specifically that I come. So should I be going? As surprised as I was that so many people said to tell Jamie, I did realize it was the right thing to do. So I texted him and told him that Kate was insisting I dressed a certain way. Jamie called and explained. A couple of months ago, Jamie and Kate were out with a few of his friends. These friends that I mentioned in my comments are not fond of Kate and everyone had a lot to drink. They were talking about how they met their significant others and the story of Jamie and Kate meeting came up. Apparently during the telling of the story, Kate asked Jamie why he had decided to hit on her rather than me and one of his friends joked that it was because he knew he didn't have a shot with the hot one, me. Kate asked if this was true and Jamie having way too much to drink explained in a way that made it sound kind of true. He said he did notice me that night and thought I was attractive just seeing me. He said he would never have have approached me because he knew he would never have a chance with someone like me. So in that way, his friend was right. He said that speaking to Kate was the absolute best outcome because he loves her and plans on spending the rest of his life with her. But even knowing this, Kate has taken this extremely hard. And even though she says she's over it, he's noticed changes in her behavior that seem to be related to that. He also admitted that he'd been planning to propose to Kate at the party and that is why he'd wanted me to be there. But after hearing this on top of the way she has been handling the situation previously, he won't be doing that anymore. After speaking to Jamie, I called Kate. She admitted that she had tied a lot to her self-worth and the fact that she'd finally been picked over me and now it felt like it wasn't true. She apologized for trying to solve her insecurities through me but also said she wasn't sure she would able to have me in her life as much as I had been with the way she's been feeling. As hurt as I was, I said I understood. She said she still wanted me to come to the party since I'd help organize him and she obviously dropped the absurd dress code so I will be going to the party. I trust that Katie will communicate her boundaries to Jamie but I don't plan on inviting him to any more events for the foreseeable future. I'm really sad that I probably lost a longtime friend over the drunken awkwardness of other people, but I also get that Kate can't help how she feels, and frankly it's for the best not to be in a secret competition. So yeah, I'm hurt, but I'm going to the party. Not a satisfying update, but an honest one. So she has a little small update too where she says, going through these comments has actually brought up a couple of memories that have, in hindsight, made me a bit uncomfortable, and I actually don't think I will end up going to this party. As much as the mutual friends will have questions and I don't know how much of the truth I will end up telling. I feel too weird right now to continue to be involved in this situation. I rejected a boy and the rejection led to my death. Hello. 
My name is Junko Furuta. I was born in 1971, Mizato City. I lived a relative normal and happy life. I was a very ambitious girl that were very focused on becoming successful. I was known to never drink, party or do anything illegal. I didn't seem like the type to attract bad boy kind of personality. But one upcoming gang member named Mayano did fall in love with me, and this gang member had connections with Japan's most feared criminal organization, the Yakuza. He asked me on a date, but I was not feeling the same so I turned him down. The result of my rejection was a fatal one. He felt embarrassed and humiliated, so he wanted revenge. Around 8.30 p.m. on November 25, 1988, I was riding my bike home after my full shift at work. My night of joy was about to become a night of horror. As I rode home on my bicycle, I was suddenly pushed to the ground by Mayano's friend Minato, while Mayano hid nearby to begin his deception. He ran over to me claiming to have witnessed the attack and offered me to walk me home safely. I trusted him and allowed him to walk me home. Along the way Mayano grabbed me and forced me into a warehouse. I was violated by Mayano in the most sickening way, having his way with me without any remorse. But this was only the beginning of my nightmare. I was assaulted again in a nearby hotel by several boys. They then concocted a plan to make me suffer for weeks. They took me to a house that already had been used as a gang hangout, they humiliated and violated me several times. They forced me to call my parents and tell them I was okay, so my parents would not inform the police. The first week of this ordeal, I was being forced to sleep in the balcony on cold nights, I was being forced to sit in a freezer and I was beat every single day. I unfortunately survived. The tenth day, Mayano and his friends would intensify their attacks. Skewers of hot food, scissors and even fireworks was put inside me. I crawled to a phone in the house and called the police, but before I could call the police, Mayano caught me. I was subjected to even more pain, beyond anything I had experienced yet. I thought my chance for freedom was lost, but one of the boys who had been invited to violate me decided to tell his brother what was happening at the Minato house, who then called the police. But police failed me. The police went to the house, but decided not to search it. They believed the invitation to search the house was sufficient proof that there was nothing to hide. Had they followed through on the information they were given, I could have been saved. This got Mayano even angrier. He tied me to the ceiling and used me as a human punching bag. I was unable to breathe through my nose anymore. By day 30 of this ordeal, I was unable to walk. The damage to my internal and intimate organs were so severe that I could not even go to the bathroom anymore. I begged my captors to end my life, to release me from the pain. On the 44th day, they beat me up so bad I finally died. Police found my killers, but the system was about to fail me in death, like they failed me in life. Miano received a light sentence of 20 years. Minato, Ogura and Yasushi served around 8 years each. Today they roam the streets free after serving their time. People are telling me, 25 male, that my girlfriend, 25 female, cheated on me. So last month, my 25 male, girlfriend, 25 female, of two years, got asked to go on a cheap vacation with a group of people she kind of knows. She's friends with two people in the group, and they were going to get a discount if they had 10 people to go on the trip. It was a 10 for 8 discount, and basically, two people would go on the trip for free. But their friend group had only 9 people, so they asked my girlfriend. She didn't want to go, but her friend pressured her, saying that she's never left the country before, and it would be fun. She caved and went on the trip, and she hated it. Like, she would call me to do nothing but complain about the activities in the group. Which I understood because the planned trip was all stuff my girlfriend hates. Scuba diving, she's afraid of the ocean. Hiking for a day and a half, she doesn't like camping. Going to parties, she has sensory issues. Being a slut on the beach, which is what she called the day she spent watching the other nine girls flirt with everything and everything that moved and other stuff. She's introverted and I can count on my hands the number of times she leaves the house in a week, including taking out the trash or going grocery shopping. She works from 
from home as well so she doesn't have to go to the office. She came back about two weeks ago and the day before yesterday I got a text from my sister, 26 female, saying that we needed to talk. I met her yesterday and she told me that my girlfriend cheated on me on the trip. Apparently one of the girls felt guilty and told my sister, who's friends with her. According to this girl, my girlfriend went clubbing with them, had 10 shots, got drunk, kissed a guy, went to the bathroom with him, did a line of coke off his and then proceeded to have with at least a dozen different men. And guess what? My sister apparently got video evidence of this. She showed me a crappy video in 360p of a girl with the same hair color and build as my girlfriend riding some black dude while f***ing off three others and saying they were so much better than her boyfriend. It was like watching some weird cuckold porn and I was mystified. The quality of the video was so horrible that for all I knew it could be Lana Rhodes in it. And none of the actions of that night described my girlfriend. The clubbing. She hates the sensory overload from the loud music and flashing lights. She would never go to a nightclub. 10 shots. My girlfriend is a lightweight that can barely function after 3 cocktails. If she had 10 shots, she'd probably be dead. Not to mention that she hates the taste of alcohol and only drinks fruity cocktails. Coke. So apparently my girlfriend got blackout drunk and also decided to do hard drugs. That makes no sense to me. Sleeping with a dozen men. She's a little nervous when having vanilla sex with me, so unless the liquid courage and coke did 180 to her personality, she would never agree to a gangbang. And this apparently took place on their last night there. Wouldn't she have a horrible hangover, not to mention whatever the equivalent of a hangover for coke? When I picked her up from the airport, she was so fresh and happy to see me. In contrast, all the other girls looked like zombies. There were more holes in the story than Swiss cheese, but my sister was so insistent that I just told her I'd talk to my girlfriend to get her to leave me alone. I went home and said that people said you cheated on me, and I'm confused why, and she was just as confused. She said none of that ever happened, and she spent the last night there in her room on her laptop. She wanted to get a good night's sleep before the flight, since she finds it hard to sleep on airplanes. And one other important factor is that she was cheated on in her previous relationship. And she told me a long time ago that she would break up with me instead of cheating because no one deserves to go through something like that. I believe my girlfriend, but it's my sister who's telling me this. Someone I'm incredibly close to and trust. If her friend came to me with this story, I would likely have laughed in her face. And honestly, it took everything in me not to laugh at my sister because the story she gave me reads like a crappy porn plot. But my sister wouldn't lie to me, so now I'm conflicted. And now she's gone and told a bunch of mutual friends who are telling me that the proof all points to her cheating on me. The proof is so full of holes that no one would ever believe it. But the person telling me this is one of the most important people in my life. But another person incredibly important to me is telling me that the story isn't true. What the heck do I do? Am I the asshole for my reaction to my birthday present? I, female 29, met Will, male 30, six years ago when I moved into a new apartment close to university. He was my next door neighbor and offered to help me put together flat pack furniture. We really hit it off and have been together ever since. Will was married right out of high school to someone who was not a very good match. They were young, dumb, and made a colossal mistake. Will recognizes now how crazy it was to marry someone at 18, but at the time, they really thought it was a good idea. That being said, the breakup and the fallout was terrible. This was before I met Will, but it sounds like like both sides were out to inflict as much pain as possible. Fortunately, there were no children or assets, but it was not a smooth process by any means. Will reached out to his ex-wife relatively recently, about two years ago, to apologize for all the pain he put her through, which I thought was quite nice of him to do. She also apologized for her actions, but both agreed that they did not want to stay in contact. However, coming out of that, Will told me that he has realized he never wants to get married again. This was a surprise to me, but I have never really wanted the white picket fence, so no marriage didn't really bother me. I am happy just to be in a long-term committed relationship. Recently, it was my birthday, and we had some people over for a barbecue. It was really lovely, but Will insisted we do presents in front of everyone. I haven't ever really done that, but I didn't have any issues with it. Everyone gifted me really sweet and thoughtful items, and it was a blast, until I got to Will's gift. Will had been really bragging about how this was the perfect gift, and I had to say, the best for last. It was a diamond tipped drill set. To be clear, I don't own a drill and have no interest in anything related to drills. My face fell and Will burst out laughing, saying that the joke is that these diamonds are the only diamonds I could ever expect to receive from him. Quote, get it? Because we aren't ever getting engaged. I was so humiliated. I excused myself and went into the house and I suppose that everyone left after a while. Will tried to then give me my real present later that evening 
insane because the drill bits were only meant as a joke. But I didn't even open it because I couldn't understand why he was so cruel in front of all of my friends. Will says that I'm overreacting when I have another gift and I agreed that we wouldn't get married. I feel really hurt and Will doesn't seem to get it. Am I overreacting? My 19 year old sister is getting married to her high school teacher. My younger sister is getting married to her 36 year old high school teacher in a few days and everyone seems okay with it. She graduated a year ago and they told us they were dating almost immediately after graduation. I was shocked and angry but everyone around me was happy and supportive of them. What is that 1936? That's like 20 year, 17 years? Oh god. The teacher divorced his wife two years ago and started paying attention to my sister. He spoke to her after class regularly and paid special attention to her studies. I thought this was weird and talked to her about this, but she told me he was helping her because she was the best student of her class, which she was. A few months ago, only a few months into dating, they announced that they were engaged. I tried talking to my parents about their age difference and stuff, but they didn't want to hear it. I talked to my sister and she told me that she is happy and that she loves him. We live in a small town with a tight-knit community and everyone else is supporting their marriage. I'm feeling useless right now and I'm angry at myself. I was unable to protect my sister. I feel like I failed my duties as an older sibling. I hate everyone around me. How do they not see what's going on here? The marriage happened. I contemplated not going to the ceremony, but I didn't want to hurt my little sister, so I went reluctantly. My blood was boiling throughout the whole thing. Everyone who came to the ceremony congratulated them. I couldn't even look the teacher in the face because I was so angry at him. I hated the whole thing. I'm leaving this town tomorrow. I had some interviews lined up and got selected in one. It's in a city and I'm moving tomorrow. I can't stand these people. My parents think that getting married to a good guy with a stable job is the best thing that could have happened to my sister and my relatives agreed. He groomed her. Why doesn't anyone else see that? I wanted to scream at everyone. When I told my sister I was leaving, she cried. I reassured her and told her that I wasn't angry at her. I made it clear to her that she could contact me anytime under any circumstances and that I'd be there for her. I bought her a phone and told her that I'd talk to her regularly. I tried to not antagonize anyone because I want them to reach out to me if anything happens. It was very hard to do. I came very close to fighting several people. My sister was a star student. I always thought that she would go to a big college and become someone significant but now she's going to be a housewife. That thought is destroying me. I wasn't harsh on her because I'm hoping that she wakes up soon and I want to be there for her when that happens. I want to support her and to see her full potential and I'm wishing it happens soon. I've told her not to have children until she's sure. She has a contraceptive implant and I told her not to get it removed for at least a couple of years. I told her to tell me if anyone ever pressured her to have it removed. I really hope she follows my advice. I'm just checking the comments and the amount of people defending the teacher is insane. People like you are the problem. She was groomed since she was 16. Why can't you people see that? I wouldn't have any problem with her choices if she wasn't coerced into them. Him being an older man isn't my issue here. Him being her teacher is. Also, I don't think being a housewife is bad. What I don't like is that the choice of something more is being taken away from my sister. As for the phone thing, my parents did not allow my sister to own a phone. She had to use the landline if she wanted to talk to people. That's why I bought her a phone. If my mom turned right, I could have been alive today. Unfortunately, she turned left. Hello, my name is James Bulger. I am two years old. On the afternoon of the 12th of February 1993, I was in the New Strand shopping center with my mother. My mother went into a butcher's shop and whilst my mom turned for a few seconds, two boys approached me, took my hand and took me outside with them. My mom ran out of the store looking for me and she had two options to either turn left or right. She chose left which was the opposite way they had taken me. A total of 38 witnesses me being led away by the boys, they listened me crying for my mom and still did nothing. When the boys reached the canal, they picked me up and dropped me on my head, then they left me on the ground crying. A woman happened to be passing by, and she noticed me crying, but she just walked on and did nothing. The boys told me to come, and I was scared so I followed them. They pulled the hood of my coat over my head to hide the injuries, but some witnesses saw my forehead injury as they passed by, but they didn't think anything of it. A woman even saw me getting punched by them, but she just drew her curtains to block out the sight. 
I was nearly saved by two women, and one of them contemplated to take me to the police station, but another woman insisted she saw me laughing just a few minutes before. The last woman who came so close to saving me saw the boys and told them that she was going to take me to the police station herself. She turned to a woman who was nearby, and she asked her to look after her daughter while she took me to safety, but she refused. They managed to take me to a deserted railway, and that's where they started hurting me. They threw the blue paint on my eyes, they stamped on me and kicked me. Then they got bricks and threw them on me. They then hit me in the head with an iron bar. I was so badly beaten that they couldn't even determine what the fatal blow was. They even put my lifeless body on the railway and hoped a train would make my death seem like an accident. Manipulative aunt torments my family for years. I get her back by tricking her into wasting $750,000. Dealt with my shitty manipulative abusive aunt all my life. Finally got revenge. My estranged father who had been living several counties over, is pretty much out of the picture by the time my parents got their divorce when I was nine. Due to financial hardship, we were forced to live with my aunt in the nightmare of a household we would soon find ourselves in. My aunt married into Georgia wealth and you can figure out what that means on your own. She had three kids and eventually caught her husband having an affair. It's a huge scandal. She gets the house, the kids and a fat payout from the family attorney. This is important because my aunt didn't do a damn thing in her life to earn her money, her house, her lifestyle or basically anything. She was born poor along with my mom. Under her household, she was drunk with power. Years of therapy have allowed me to recognize that certain people, when in a position of power, get a perverse pleasure in ordering others to do their bidding. She was the strictest of authoritarians in every possible way you could imagine. Chores had to be completed by an exact specific time. Vacuuming by 3.45 p.m., dishes by 3.55 p.m., laundry days for my mother as kids were 2 slash 5.35 p.m. to 7.55 p.m. If it was still running, she would shut the power off for the two units. As we grew older, her own kids opted to stay with their father for full-time custody and she had them on weekends. Even they couldn't stand her when she was in charge and in the house. As time passed, she got them less and less opting for alternating weekends as high school activities took precedence over time with mother. For my sister and I, the large six-bedroom house was not ours for the taking. My mom had to pay rent as well as rent for one bedroom as that was all she could afford on her salary. We had to share a bedroom until my second year of HS. All the while there was one spare unused bedroom available at all times. My aunt needed this for guests when they stayed over. Not one guest stayed there in the 10 years I was under that roof. Finally the church we attended told my aunt to give up the spare bedroom so my sister can have her own room as it was unhealthy for two teenagers sharing a room together like that. That infuriated my aunt because someone told her what to do in her own household. My sister and I got the brunt of her wrath. As my mom's salary was tapped out, my sister and I had to do extra chores like mowing the lawn, trimming the shrubs, and cleaning the pool which we could no longer use without her being outside watching us. My aunt's behavior was becoming more and more outrageous and disconnected from society. For example, she had always snapped her fingers when she wanted to get someone's attention, but it was getting far more frequent and she would blow up into a tirade if either my sister and I didn't obey. Her own kids tried repeatedly to tell her that the shit she was doing was wrong but she wouldn't listen. Eventually they wanted nothing to do with her outside of the home. She was a tyrant there and repeated intervention to get her to see the folly of her ways would fall on deaf ears. I had just graduated HS and started my first semester of community college. I'm two weeks into my classes attending from home when my aunt drops a bomb on me. You owe me dollar for this month's rent, the same amount for next month's rent as well. It is the 27th after all. You're an adult now, you're out of HS and working now, so you need to pay rent the F? I blew a effing gasket as I yelled back. You can't just suddenly decide to charge me rent just because you feel like it. I need 30 days notice, I have rights. My aunt yelled at me with some bullshit excuse that she had discussed this with my mother and it was decided that I needed to pay my own rent now. In some miraculous backbone move, of which I still have no idea how I stood up to her, I yelled right back at her, if I'm an adult, then treat me like and talk to me about rental agreements. I'll start paying you rent in 30 days starting the first. I turned my back to her and walked away with my fists ball tight. I was furious with anger but I walked away. My aunt saw my fists from behind and screamed bloody murder that I was going to attack her. No, I wasn't. She snapped her fingers at me repeatedly on my tail to get my attention but I didn't turn around. I needed to cool off and clear my head. As I turned the corner, she grabbed my wrist hard yelling I'm not finished talking to you. I threw my still balled up fist forward keeping with my stride to break her grip as I hadn't stopped my momentum. This caused her grabbing arm to slam hard into the corner of the wall that I had just turned into. She screamed in pain but I left the house and took off. The aftermath of that incident was that my aunt called the cops on me in an attempt to press charges. She was taken to the hospital and suffered a fractured wrist and she was put in a cast slash sling. Don't know as I never saw it and never inquired further. Her story changed every time she told the cops what happened while my story was spot on every time. I can still recall that moment down to the smell in the house, where I was facing, the working and non-working light bulbs etc forever ingrained in me. I was kicked out of the house and I couldn't visit my sister or my mom there at the house again. 
fine by me as I didn't want to see my bitch aunt ever again. While I have been able to forgive, not forget, my aunt for what she has done to me, I cannot forgive her for what she did to my mother. Kept her in financial hardship for a decade while she sat on a bank account full of cash and assets, or what she did to my sister, forced her to pay for damages because the water heater burst while my aunt and mother were away one weekend leaving my sister at home. She didn't discover the flooded rooms for hours, my aunt's reasoning, it was her responsibility to watch the house, not the responsibility of the homeowner to maintain slash replace the water heater before it goes, let's leave that upfront $5,000 financial burden before the flood insurance kicks in on a 16 year old girl, I've had little to no contact with my aunt since I was kicked out of the house nearly two decades ago, but I do keep in constant contact with my cousins, while I'm not going to divulge what I do for a living, I can say that I worked with and for the government, I've worked my ass off getting to where I'm at today, I'm known for being truthful, wise and giving good advice when asked. Because of this, I often talk financially with my cousins, all of whom are money smart and are doing well for themselves. They often then relay this information to their scheming mother who has no mind for business and investments. All that money she got from her house sale, her divorce settlement, her previous investments is pretty much gone. I spent years planning on the perfect trap and it took a long time to prepare everything to make sure everything appeared right. Ian now and I don't pretend to know the law but I do know the regulations and laws pertaining to insider information. This is not that. 100% certain of it and if I ever go to court, I know my lawyer has a solid case in my defense. But is this a gray area? Most definitely. I let slip to my cousins about some future real estate plans near my aunt's new area of living. It may be worth a lot more because of future development taking place in the area. All of that was true and backed up by what was in the newspaper and new construction signs that newly appeared on Google Maps, at the time. The rest was fabricated by myself backed up by actual information I looked up on real estate websites and on projects I was working on through my work. The telephone game takes place and a few weeks later I presume, my aunt starts making phone calls to real estate agents trying to buy lots of land in the undeveloped shitty area of her new house. Over the course of a few months to a half a year, she spends $750,000 of her last remaining savings on land hoping it will pay out when the area around it gets developed in the upcoming years. Only, HUD slash government slash city doesn't have any plans to develop in those immediate areas. In fact, analysis showed that building in those areas was poor planning and would cost the taxpayers twice to three times as much as the land was not environmentally sound. It was best to build six miles away. This post was long overdue because it's been over two years since my aunt purchased land that is basically worthless. See, she won't sell the land unless she gets at least the same price she paid for it because she's the owner of that land. Can't tell her what to do on her own land. Sweet karma strikes in a way I couldn't possibly have foreseen. My cousin informed me that the value of the land has decreased significantly because it's not environmentally sound to build anything commercial there. But it's zoned for commercial use. Currently three of the four blocks of land she purchased are just weed farms next to eyesore abandoned buildings or industrial complexes. Nobody can build on it and nor does anyone want to buy it. Sucks to be her. Parents, why did you not let that friend over at your house? My daughter is not allowed to stay at A's house and it can only come to hours during the day but never overnight. We allowed her to stay the night there one time last year and the stories that came back from a single night were completely unacceptable. Here are a few. The dad has a room that no one is allowed to go in, not even the mom. When he is going into it or coming out of it he knocks on the door and everyone has to look in the other direction. The windows of that room are even blocked out with black trash bags. A said she has seen the inside of the room before and there is just a couch, a TV and an Xbox One. I don't care. My daughter is never going to go there. The dad also apparently has lots of friends that visited all through the night. Most friends never actually came into the house. None of them knocked on the front door. The dad would either get a message or just know they were there and hang out with them for a little while by their back door. In the morning, before I picked my daughter up, she and A were outside playing with the dogs. My daughter is well-mannered and when A's dad asked her if she had put her breakfast plate away she answered yes, sir. Well, apparently, what he heard was yes, sergeant and it royally pissed him off. He started screaming at A that her friends are disrespectful and that my daughter wasn't allowed back in his house. He then referred to himself in third person as sergeant for the rest of the day and I am told it was until way after my daughter was gone. I told my daughter at school that it had all been straightened out and her dad felt bad about the misunderstanding and wants her to come stay the night again and will take them four-wheeler riding in the woods as an apology. 1. They don't have four wheelers so how is this even possible 2. No effing way is my daughter going out in the woods with this guy. If you are wondering, no he did not let my daughter back in the house. A had to pack up her things for her, which her dad watched her do to make sure she wasn't taking anything of theirs. When I got there, they were sitting outside. I had no idea why nor did I think anything of it till I got the previously mentioned story. Also, what was packed up for my daughter as her stuff was not all of her stuff and we had to make a run to the store later for a toothbrush and her shampoo. She also didn't get any of her dirty clothes back and A insisted at school that she couldn't find anything else of my daughter's at their house. Hmm, I would not fit in my daughter's clothes nor would her mother sew my daughter's new size zero jeans, small shirt, small exercise bra and panties somehow just vanished. The mom also did not speak the whole night. She just watched TV and would get up to get something for her husband or make him dinner but she didn't speak to A or my daughter and she also did not make them dinner. They had some popcorn and made their own breakfast in the morning. These girls were 16 at the time. I wish my daughter would have called me to say things were a bit odd. I would have come to get her sooner, 
Since this incident, we now have a code message because she said she didn't know what to say even if she did call me. So now if something is amiss and she is uncomfortable she is to call or message me asking when her next orthodontist appointment is. It lets me think of the reason she has to be picked up and she does not have to feel awkward or in any way disrespectful. I have also told her it is perfectly acceptable to just say she wants to go home, but I also understand where that can escalate an already bad situation. She can't stay the night at our house because when A stayed at our house, her dad would call her randomly, even at 4 a.m. She missed the call once around 12.30 a.m. and immediately called him back. He was already in his car driving to our house to get her because she didn't answer and I had to listen to a teenager talk her own dad out of a screaming rage. It was disgusting and I am not going to have that around my daughter.